All right, what camera do we have here to reveal? All right, this is very exciting. I'm currently in Singapore right now. The Leica store is just a couple meters away from me. It's loud over there, so I'm gonna turn back this way. And they're gonna let me borrow a camera that's not out yet. You guessed it by the title. You know what you're here for already, but I'm excited because I haven't got my hands on it yet. This is the Leica Q3. I don't know what to expect. I've signed the NDA. I know some of the specs, but I don't know what to expect as far as using it. But this is a very interesting camera to me. It's one of their most popular cameras, but it's also a camera I'm considering to add to my little personal arsenal. So I've seen the specs, but excited to test out, excited to share it with you guys. So I'm gonna hop into the store right now. They're gonna give me that camera. We're gonna wander around Singapore. I'm gonna give you my first impressions, second impressions, third impressions, and final impressions. And we're gonna have fun along the way. And I'm not gonna be as overexposed as I am now. All right, I'm walking into the Leica store now. They're expecting me, but I always like to see how they react to me just sort of like popping in. Brother, we don't know uh, you are <laughs> Real person or not. Hello, I'm Justin. Hi. How are you? Jonathan. I'm kind of filming live while I'm in here. Is that okay? Oh. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> How are you guys today? I'm good. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. We had a lot to do today. Okay. Now today I'm getting a special camera, but other people in the store don't know about it, so I have to be kind of sneaky about it. That's it. Well, not that, but it's here somewhere. I don't know if they're going to give it to me when like other people aren't looking or what. This is the Leica, the long-awaited, not long-awaited, but eagerly awaited Leica Q3. I'm gonna go out in the streets of Singapore, I'm gonna tell you all the new specs, give you my impressions, show you some B-roll of this camera, get excited about it, it's gonna be a fun episode, not some boring unboxing. I'm actually gonna put this camera to the test, really use it, really take pictures, and give you my honest thoughts. So let's get out of the Leica store here, and let's head out in the streets, and let's go use this camera. All right, guys, I'm here at the Gardens by the Bay, and this is where I'm gonna wander around and test this bad boy. Uh, the Q3 here. So the only caveat is I can't show you guys pictures, which is a bummer because I am a photographer and this thing does take pictures and that's what we need to talk about. But it's because they haven't fine tuned the camera yet. This is uh, several weeks before it's about to be launched. So I had to sign an NDA, had to agree to not show pictures. That's the caveat today, but we're still gonna have fun. Still gonna give you my impressions of this camera, tell you the ins and outs, give, tell you what's different from the Q2 and tell you if I'd be interested in buying a camera like this in the end. It's a cool place, by the way. If you're interested in architectural photography, uh, come to the Gardens by the Bay and have a great view looking back at the city. And it's just fascinating architecture here. Just look around me. A lot of things you could do with leading lines, a lot of frames within the frames. One way to ride, huh? <laughs> All right, while I wait out my time lapse over there in an illegal spot, I figured I'd touch on some of the features that jump out to me about this camera. I've done more of a deep dive into those features in my first impressions video. You can check that out if you're interested. I'll put the link up here. So first thing that jumps out is the design. Something that I come to Leica for is the beauty of their design, is the ergonomics of the camera. That's really important to me. That's important to a lot of you guys. So we do have an exciting new change to the design of the Q3. You now have an articulating screen. It tilts out just like that, as you can see there. Quite nice, it doesn't flip out all the way, so if you're a content creator and you like to film yourself, it's not gonna flip up, it's not gonna flip off to the side, so you can see yourself when you're filming. However, if you're into photography, which is probably why you bought this camera, it's fantastic for people like me that like to get in funky angles with their camera. You're down low and you wanna just look at your screen, or you wanna kinda shoot from the hip and still see your screen. So for street photographers that like to get in funky positions, up, down, all around, it's great for that. I love it, I love that they've added to it, and I don't feel it takes away from the aesthetic and the beautiful design of this camera one bit. You can have a look for yourself. Now, as far as the lens goes, they've stayed with that 28 millimeter. For you 35 millimeter people out there like me, a little bit of a disappointment. However, this lens has grown on me and it is a beautiful lens and it's super fast. So they've stayed with that 1.7 maximum aperture. You still have the macro mode here. Now you can focus at 17 centimeters. So if you like to get close to your subjects, you like to shoot product stuff, you like to shoot macro shots, you like to shoot animals, insects, all that stuff, you now have that option. I'm not a macro shooter. However, when I did use this camera when I was photographing the other white rhinos, it was nice 
to be able to use that macro mode to get close to the animal's eyes. And I could see people using that for portraits as well. It now has built-in optical stabilization. So you kind of have no problems using this camera in low light. And also on that note, it's got an updated ISO range of 50 to 100,000 ISO. So you couple the optical stabilization with that maximum ISO of 100,000 with that 1.7 lens, you can shoot in just about any lighting condition you can imagine. The sensor has new technology. It's called triple resolution technology. And what that means now is you can decide if you want to use the file at 60 megapixels, 36 megapixels, or 18 megapixels. Whatever size DNG file you decide to use, you're still using the full capacity of that sensor. So that's quite a new technological feat there, which I think a lot of people will enjoy. I know I will, because sometimes I would use this camera for commercial work, or if I was on assignment, I need the best possible file. I'm gonna use the 60 megapixel sensor, but if I'm just shooting travel stuff, just taking pictures of my dogs around the house, I might shoot 18 or 36. Sorry, dogs. It's not gonna clog up and slow down my workflow. We have a 5.7 megapixel OLED viewfinder, which is really nice. It's crystal clear. If you're coming from an M system like I am, a rangefinder system, it's just nice to have that really high resolution, really pristine, real life view when you're looking through the viewfinder. It's solid, their technology on that has been superb. I've absolutely loved it on the SL2 system as well. Got a new hybrid autofocus system, now mixing two different technologies. So you have a defocus system now, and also using contrast autofocus. And honestly, when it comes to autofocus stuff, and the technology of it, I'm not that interested in it. I don't understand it well. I just know it works well. It does have subject recognition now. So they are catching up to Sony in that regard. But I've never really had any struggles with the Q2, but anyway, this is supposed to be an updated autofocus system. But again, I've never really had any struggles and so far just using it around here. Not shooting a lot of action, although there are people going by on their bikes, I can test it, but it has worked perfectly for me so far. A couple other things, they've updated the app, they've updated the integration with Apple. So if you're the kind of person that likes to go out with this camera and or even travel with this camera and you don't want to take a laptop, you're going to be using your phone or your iPad, you're going to be uploading pictures on the fly, which I think a lot of people are doing more of that now. So it's kind of nice. They've updated their system so it's 10 times faster with the connectivity. They've optimized it to work with Apple products and the Apple ecosystem. So if you're using this with an iPad or an iPhone like I am with like a Photos app, you're going to transfer your files really, really quickly and not going to have any issues. I know no, that could be a big problem. I've used the Sony system for a long time for my commercial work and using their app is just an absolute mess. Leica has done a great job with their app. I don't know why camera companies suck with apps. Leica does not. Okay, Hasselblad is actually pretty good as well, but Leica's done a fantastic job with their Leica Photos app from day one. And now it's even faster and works even better. It stayed with that sort of eject battery system, which I also really, really like. Just to touch on the video really quick, it can now shoot in 8K, which is impressive. It does have better connectivity options with USB-C and HDMI. So if you wanna to connect to a gimbal, you wanna to connect to a power bank, you wanna to connect to an external monitor, You've got options now. I don't see myself using this for professional video, but it's just nice to know that it does have that option and it does have more pro codecs now with Apple ProRes capabilities. Another cool feature, it does have wireless charging now. See that little port there? It's gonna come through a grip accessory that attaches on it, but now you're not gonna have to like take the battery out and charge it. You can actually connect and charge it wirelessly like you can a lot of your other products. You can see all this integration with Apple. I think they're learning some things from Apple. So that's nice, maybe. You know what would be awesome on that note? Wouldn't it be awesome if they made like an Apple with a Leica lens on it? That would be really cool. I don't know, just a thought, you guys. Bring two of my favorite companies together to make one mega product. So those are the features that jump out to me. I'm gonna go out and shoot a little bit more, get a feel for this camera, give you guys my impressions of this camera. When I get back to my room at the Intercontinental, we'll go through everything. I'll tell you my final thoughts about this camera and I'll let you know if it's something that I'm interested in purchasing. And you guys can let me know if it's something you're interested in purchasing. So let me get out of here, let me go shoot, let me go check out my time lapse. All right, final thoughts here on the Leica Q3. It is appealing, it is intriguing, it is versatile. It is a camera that I'm strongly considering to adding to my arsenal. There's so many factors for all of you guys out there that watch my channel. I know some of you shoot with an SL, some of you shoot with an M, some of you have a Q2 and consider upgrading. Some of you are Fuji people and you're thinking about coming over to the Leica team. This is a camera that's kind of a hybrid that can sort of blend in with all those different camera systems. For me personally, I shoot with an M10D and I love that experience. This would complement 
complement that camera quite well as a backup camera. I can still use it professionally on shoots if I need it. Sometimes it's nice to have the autofocus. Sometimes it's nice to have those macro capabilities. Again, not shooting flowers, not shooting insects and things like that, but I am shooting animals, I am shooting stories, and sometimes those stories have details that I wanna capture, people's hands, or if they're craftsmen and they're making different things, I can get closer shots of that as well. Using it out in the gardens by the bay, it was just a reminder to me also that this camera is quite versatile and that yes, it would be an expensive walk around everyday camera or expensive travel camera, but once you're kind of hooked on the like a feel and like aesthetic, it's hard to it's hard to go back. So having this camera out in a tourist situation where I got to play tourist today, sometimes it's fun to do that as a professional photographer. It was versatile. I didn't find myself needing another camera. I didn't find myself, oh, I wish I had this, wish I had that. It was nice. Took some pictures of my wife, took some architectural pictures, took some detailed pictures, took some landscape shots. It's just very versatile. And the files are amazing. Again, unfortunately, you're gonna have to take my word for it because I can't show you pictures. Files are incredible. I've looked at them closely and maybe I'll be able to show you in the future, I don't know, but because this is a pre-production model. But the experience for me has just been incredible. I'm strongly considering this, but I'm also considering that M11 monochrome, so I'll let you know what I go with. I don't have the budget for both. So yeah, if you're an SL shooter and you want a smaller, lightweight camera or travel camera or an everyday camera, this is coming handy. If you're an M shooter and you want a backup camera that offers a couple different things, especially autofocus, with that new autofocus system in here that is really precise and really fast, this would be an option for you. If you're thinking about going from Fuji into the Leica world and you want one camera that kind of does it all, this can do that as well. A couple negatives I would say, just a few things for me. I do wish they came out with a 35 millimeter option. That would be nice for someone like me who likes to shoot 35. I do think the tiltable screen would have been nice for a content creator uh, that's not just photography focused. You also do video. It'd be nice because they've added those new pro video capabilities. It would be nice if the screen flipped around or the screen flipped up so you could see yourself while you film. That would have been nice, but other than that, I love the upgrades to this camera. I would say they are rather significant. It's not just some tiny little tweaks. They've put a lot of thought, they've listened to people's requests, and they've made those updates, and it's a significantly better camera than the Q2 is. Not that the Q2 was a bad camera, but it's a versatile camera. It's fun to use. It feels great in your hand. I like that they haven't made too many changes to the aesthetic because that's why a lot of people fell in love with this camera. The aesthetic is kind of perfect in a lot of ways. Not as good as the M, but it's close and it's lighter, so I like that about this camera. Thank you to Leica Singapore. Thank you to Intercontinental Singapore for putting me up on this entire trip. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you have any questions about this camera, ask me in the comment section. Let me know if you're gonna upgrade. Let me know if you're gonna add it to your arsenal. I love all that stuff, so put that in the comment section. I do my best to respond to everybody's comment in there. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day. I am currently here at the presidential suite at the Intercontinental Singapore, and I just want to show you guys, before I give you the full tour of my YouTube channel, it's just a little teaser. I'm just going to keep walking because that's how gigantic this 259 square meter room is. It costs about 3,000 Singapore dollars per night, has its own private sauna, its own boardroom, floor to ceiling windows, and this ridiculously gigantic and beautifully decorated bedroom. The full tour coming soon on my YouTube channel. Thank you, Intercontinental Singapore, and I'll see you guys soon.